It's in the nature of human beings that we always strive to fathom and understand our environment as precisely as possible. Thus, we are practically animated by the desire to explore the exact workings and backgrounds of all objects and structures that surround us, down to the smallest detail. This also includes classifying our surroundings in terms of sizes and dimensions, which in turn helps us to authentically comprehend the characteristics of the corresponding entities. What is still a comparatively simple undertaking on Earth becomes more difficult the further we let our inquisitive gaze wander in the direction of outer space. Indeed, questions about the exact dimensions of the solar system and the universe are still among the central fields of modern scientific research. What problems arise in the measurement of the universe and what findings experts have already been able to record regarding this topic will reveal to you now. Are you excited about fascinating events, mysterious riddles, and groundbreaking discoveries in space? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space and never miss any of our videos in the future. If you enjoy the content of our posts, we would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. Now let's explore together the question of how big our galactic home really is. The Solar System, the structure of our cosmic home. As most of you surely already know, our home planet doesn't move alone through the universe, but is part of a superordinate association, which is called the Solar System. The system owes its name to its largest and most influential celestial body, the Sun. As the central star of this complex, to which all other surrounding objects are gravitationally bound, the imposing Sun accounts for more than 99% of the total mass of the association of countless planets, moons, dwarf planets, and various small bodies such as comets and asteroids. This includes the total mass of all dust and gas particles that cannot escape the powerful gravitational pull of our central host star. As is well known, the eight official planets of our solar system have always been the most prominent representatives of this superior galactic association. Thereby, the four terrestrial, or in other words, Earth-like celestial bodies with a solid surface structure, are closest to the gleaming bright dwarf star. Beyond Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, we encounter the imposing gas planets, which differ significantly from the celestial bodies in front of them in terms of their chemical composition. In fact, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune consist mainly of light gases such as hydrogen and helium. The distance between the Sun and the most distant planet Neptune is estimated to be almost 3 billion miles. However, this does not mean that this value also corresponds to the surface diameter of the entire solar system. Because in fact, in those isolated regions, which are called trans-Neptunian areas, there are innumerable dwarf planets and asteroids affected by the pole of the Sun. In reality, this means that almost all celestial bodies in our solar system rotate counterclockwise around the central host star when viewed from the north. Only Venus, Uranus, and some smaller celestial bodies fall out of this scheme. Depending on the distance and spatial position of the objects to the Sun, the individual orbital periods show the most diverse characteristics. As is known, our Earth, which is on average about 90 million miles away from the central dwarf star, needs about 365 days to orbit the Sun once completely. The small planet Mercury which is separated from the Sun by a distance of 36 million miles, needs just 88 days for this undertaking. The situation is completely different in the case of Neptune. It takes 165 years before the giant planet has rotated once around the Sun. Now that we have taken a look at the structure and the modes of action of the galactic complex as a whole, one burning question remains. How big is the solar system in truth? How big is the solar system? The sobering answer to this question is currently, we don't know. Because in fact, there is no single definition in the world of science that can say with certainty where our solar system ultimately ends. 
In the past, the assumption was widespread that the solar system extends up to the edge of the so-called heliosphere. This region describes that area in space in which the solar wind, a stream of charged particles, which is constantly ejected by the sun, has influence. The last border of the heliosphere is called heliopause. Said zone is located in all probability about 9 billion miles away from the sun. However, some groundbreaking discoveries prove that the trans-Neptunian formations behind the heliopause are still bound to the gravitational influence of the sun. The common assumption to define the heliopause as the edge of the solar system was therefore invalid. In order to be able to say with certainty how far the mighty arm of the sun reaches in truth, requires still further, more in-depth investigations in complex projects. The Measurement of the Universe So, while we're currently unable to determine the end of the Sun's sphere of influence, the question remains as to how it will look in the case of measuring the entire universe. As many of you will already suspect, this ambitious undertaking entails some serious accompanying complications. First of all, the question of how exactly our galactic home is actually constructed has to be resolved. Some common assumptions suggest that it could be a spherical structure. However, this is only one of the innumerable theses presently circulating in the world of science. Thus, some researchers consider it likewise conceivable that the universe is flat, while other experts prefer a hypertorus form, which reminds us of a donut. Beyond that, the hypothetical trumpet form is hotly discussed in the ranks of experts. A further, not to be underestimated problem with the exact size determination of the universe lies in the fact that our galactic home constantly increases. Since the distance between far-flung entities in the universe is constantly expanding, experts have concluded that the universe itself must also be expanding spatially. While the expansion rate of the universe initially slowed down in the first periods after the Big Bang, the corresponding expansion rate of the universe continues to increase today. However, scientists needed a plausible explanation to describe this phenomenon comprehensively without throwing the common physical assumptions completely into chaos. In order to explain the constantly faster expansion speed of the universe, the thesis of dark energy was proposed. This term, defined at the end of the 90s by American astrophysicist Michael S. Turner, describes a hypothetical form of energy which outwits the prevailing gravitational forces within the universe and explains the fact that our galactic home continuously enlarges. But the thesis that our universe is possibly infinitely large complicates the measurement of the universe immensely. Here, it's important to distinguish between the theory of infinity and the assumption of unboundedness. If our universe is thought to be spherical, this would mean in the reverse conclusion that the structure possesses a finite volume. Nevertheless, it could exist as unlimited space. In fact, spherical surfaces do not have a definable center, so that we could theoretically move on the structure for an infinite time without ever reaching a clearly defined edge. However, since according to the most common cosmic hypotheses, the universe is not classified in a higher dimensional space, this illustration should always be considered with the ulterior motive that it only serves as a simplified view of the properties of a spherical universe. What we can see of the universe. Finally, the question remaining to be clarified is which regions of the universe are at all fathomable with our terrestrial eye. The area defined as the observable universe in the technical world is limited by some different factors. These include not only the location of the Earth within the universe, but also the technical tools that mankind currently has at its disposal. The most modern telescopes of the renowned space agencies are currently able to look about 13.8 billion light years into space. As a reminder, one light year corresponds to a distance of 6 trillion miles. Due to the spatial circumstances and our technical possibilities, there's a spherical area in space around our earthly point of view that we can observe. The radius of this sphere is 13.8 billion light years. As this unit of measurement suggests, a light year describes the distance that light can cover in a vacuum within one year. And exactly in this circumstance lies a considerable problem. 
Although light beams travel through space at a speed of about 180,000 miles per second, they are still too slow to make the actual dimensions of the universe visible. In the end, this means that we see those processes in distant galaxies with a strong time delay. For example, we see a galaxy that is a billion light years away from our Earth only as it existed a billion years ago. So looking at far-flung structures in space is tantamount to taking a real look into the past. This also means that the edge of our observable universe due to the progressive expansion beyond the limits of light, is not 13.8, but in truth, 46 billion light years away from our home planet. What are your thoughts on the scale of the solar system and the universe? We look forward to your comments. Now click on the images in the credits for more exciting videos. Thanks for your interest. We'll see you next time.